everybody. This is from Creative Minds. Today we're going to call this our Saturday subscriber shout out day. Now, we may not have uploaded this video on a Saturday exactly, but we made it on a Saturday. <laughs> so it takes us some time to produce. We're still not in the stage where we uh, make a video and upload it immediately. We have a, a little bit of editing to do to get it just right for you so it's not too long, not too short, whatever. But we're going to call this our Saturday subscriber shout out. And what we'd like to do is say hello and give a shout out to a few of our subscribers. Actually, six of our subscribers. We would like to say hi to Judy Whittle, Leanne Nail, Leanne Woodard, Susie Ayanin Tuwani, I hope that's right. I'm sorry if I'm not saying your name correctly, but it's Susie Ayanin Tuwani is what I'm thinking it's pronounced. Correct me, Susie, if I'm wrong. Kiz Mama and Elizabeth Colburn. For tonight, we'd like to say hello to you and we'd like to thank you for subscribing and for, for supporting us. It means so much to us and all of the rest of the subscribers that have recently subscribed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's telling us that we are hoping we're aiming in the right direction and getting some things uploaded that are interesting to you and that will help you on your journey with polymer clay, resin, wire, whatever it may be, or maybe all of the above. We always take a look at the subscribers that subscribe to us. We try to go through and review and try to look at their channels as well to see if there's something we can subscribe to because again, we like to create with you. We like to be a part of your building process and sometimes we learn from one another. So just wanted to say that before we got started today. We've worked very hard at producing a good product for you today to watch and it's a jewelry set and we hope that you'll enjoy it. Hey there, it's MJ with Creative Minds and tonight we have for you this faux dichroic set. And basically this is a pendant made of polymer clay and resin. And we have some earrings here and a ring. And Basically, if you keep watching, you're going to find out that we made two sets in one video because we also made a second set with some different colors so that you could see an, another difference of this effect with some other colors. So if you're interested in how to make this pendant, the earrings, the ring, one or all of them, then just keep watching. Okay, first things first, I've rolled this clay, this is Sculpey 3 Black, and I rolled it out on a 4 on my Atlas 180 pasta machine. I'm going to be cutting out a little bit more than what's needed for the video, that's why I have a little bit more here, but really all you need is about this size right here to fit whatever size circle cutter you're going to use for your pendant. If you want to make the earrings ring, you can cut out additional sizes. These, this is for the backing. The first thing you have to do on the backing is to put a pattern on, on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put my pattern. Now my pattern is not going to be easy to put on. I'm going to fast forward through this. This is a great tool. I mentioned this in some of my other videos. It's like a leather punch tool and you get a whole kit of these on Amazon for a very good price. I think it's under $20. And I will leave a link for the products in the description box below. Okay, next you're going to cut out your pieces. So take the pendant size that you want, find an area on here that you like, and go ahead and cut that out.
Cut on all the sizes you'll need if you're making pendants and earrings and the ring. If you're just making the pendant, you only need one circle. These do not have to be beveled. Okay, next what you're going to do is you're going to roll your clay onto a the zero setting. On, it's a zero setting on my, my Atlas 180. It might be a one, it could be a nine. I'm not sure what it is on your clay machine, but it's the widest setting. And what I'm going to do is cover it with some silver leaf. This is your silver leaf foil. It's very, very delicate. And you're just going to place this on the clay and it should adhere itself right to the clay without any trouble. And you'll have some flyaway pieces if it breaks apart, but you just want to get it all on there. If you have any areas that don't cover, just take some of these areas off the side here and just place it on there. It doesn't have to be super neat or whatever. It just has to be on there. Probably going to need another piece here. Ooh, and it blows away. But just to get these areas that don't have any on there, so all the black is covered. Okay, once you get that on there and it's all on there nice and even, you want to make sure that all your black is covered and that it's nice and flat on there. You're going to go ahead and cut your pieces out again on this setting. If some of the foil comes off, just stick a little bit on there. And again, I'm cutting out a few more. I'm making the whole set. If you're not making the whole set, then you don't need to cut out all these. Just cut out the ones that you need. Okay, you're gonna need some squares also. Out of this, you don't need backings for them, but I'm using a very small square cutter. I have these really tiny ones that came from another set um, that I bought on Amazon, and I will have to show you that. But you're gonna need, uh, for one pendant, you'll need two smaller squares. And just to let you know, these are gonna be going on the pendant. If you were to cut the pendant in half, they'll be going on a quarter, of the pendant here and a quarter of the pendant here so that's where they're going to be going so if you wanted to eyeball what size you'd need for that that's how you would go ahead and do that I just need some small ones actually and then two more of those so you're going to need two for one pendant i'm making two pendants so i'm going to be cutting out four of them you only need to cut out two if you're doing one pendant I'm going to cut one more because one of these looks kind of wonky. So I'll pick the best one when I go to do it. This one up here looks kind of wonky. Okay, so you're going to need... this is These little ones are just for the ring and the, the earrings. So if you're going to make the ring and the earring, then you're going to need two for the ring. And you're going to need four for the earrings because you'll need two for each earring. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some bacon bond and put it on to our backing pieces and put all these backings on. So again, if you're just doing the pendant, you're just going to need to do the one piece. There we go. Okay, and you're just going to gently place your piece, match and marry the edges up and match them up and flip it over and make sure that you have a nice married edge there. Looks like I've got a bubble or two on the back here, and that's real easy to take care of. I don't know if you can see that, but right here, it's a little bubble. I just make a little slit in there and let the air out and then just press it back down. You don't want bubbles in there. I don't know how those bubbles got in there. And if you need to, you can always smooth the clay right around, smooth the clay right around where that little line was that you made, and it'll go right away for you. If you're doing a ring, you're going to want to do the same thing with your ring, is place some bacon bond on the back of your, just so that the thicknesses will be the same. This is not so much that you're trying to get the pattern on the back, but you want your thickness to be the same as everything else. If you're doing a ring, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put your bacon bond on and marry those pieces up and we're doing the ring not so much for the pattern on the back but we're doing it so that we have the same thickness of the clay so we want to keep the same thickness a unified thickness going all the way around unified thickness so we keep it all the same size 
and just make sure those are married up good ta-da okay and if you're doing the earrings you're going to and I like to look and see which ones look the cutest before I stamp them all out you know I try to get the cutest little backings on them and go ahead and put some bacon bond now you only need to do two of these if you're doing the earrings you only need two so you're gonna place your earrings then onto the backing make sure that your pattern is on the underside of this when you put your bacon bond you don't want to put your bacon bond on the pattern side you want to make sure you have it on the side that is flat and you want to marry that up also without when I say married up I mean make sure the edges are even when it's on there and make sure you smooth the line a little bit on the side if you can where they met just a little bit and just make sure it's nice and even you don't have an overhang of the polymer clay anywhere where it's not supposed to be and again I'm doing whoopsie I'm doing two sets so I'm going to marry up an extra pair here and you never know by doing these two sets I'm I'm trying not I'm trying to avoid filming both because it's not necessary to repeat it but when we get to the decoration phase you might like the colors that I've chosen perhaps for one of them more than the other one so that would be the earring Okay, for the next phase, what you're going to do is take your pendant and you're going to be making some indentations in it so that we can do the dichroic look. I have this, you can use your blade if you want. I have this ice resin spreader that spreads like resin on top of a surface. And this is just a really nice thickness for what I'm doing. You can use your blade, like I said, but what you want to do is you want to go pretty much down the middle of this of this circle and you want to make an indentation. And what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of eyeballing where this is going to go and you're just going to make an indentation. You don't want to go all the way through. You just want to make a, a deep indentation there. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it this way because I need to make an indentation just as deep as the other one. So we have it on both ways. Okay, and we'll do that. And we're going to do that on the other pendant as well. So I'm going to show you both pendants because I'm going to use different colors in the pendants. I do, I think I've got it. Okay, and so we're going to do the same thing here. So now we've got the indentations there. You don't want to go through to the other side. You just want to make a basic indentation on the front side. And you're going to do the same thing with the ring. Now the only thing about the earrings is I would put one side going one way and the other side going the other. And what I mean by that is having your line come out on this side on this way and then on this side on the other side so that you can flip your earrings and have the look on both sides. next step you can either roll by hand or you can use an extruder I'm going to use an extruder for the next step okay so this is my extruder I have the Macon's clay extruder and I'm gonna go ahead and just put a tube of black clay in there sometimes if you squeeze it you can get a little bit more in there we don't really need that much but I chose two different settings for the extrusion and like I said, you don't need that much of either one. But I've got this one, which is a small circle. There's a, one, there's a circle that's bigger than this. I think there's two bigger circles than this. And then this one's really small circle. So, oops, might help if I put one of those in there. You just pop that disc in there. 
if you don't know how to use an extruder. Close this up. And then you're going to turn the crank, which is at this side. So you just rotate the crank. And what's going to happen is it's going to start coming out on this side. See it? There we go. And you just kind of let that fall. Try not to put it on top of itself. Or I try not to anyway, because I don't want it to stick to itself. And we don't need a whole lot. And I'm going to roll out a little extra in case of, you know, whatever, in case we need it. And I think that's enough. I can always roll out some more. So what you do with this, let me find the end of this here. Now, you could have also hand rolled that. There's no problem with that. But you're going to place this down into these dents that you made. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put just a little bit of bacon bond into the well. Just a tad bit. I'm going to put a little bit on that side and I'm just going to take a tool and just spread it across. I'm going to get it on the... I don't even think this is necessary per se, but and and I think it's better because the the piece the indentation is so small that I think that we should use a tool to put some bacon bond in there and you just need a very little bit okay something else but anyhow you're gonna just lie this black string into one of the lines that you created and just cut it off on the side like so on both sides and you're going to do the same thing over here you're going to meet up and if you can see this very well you're going to meet up with this black hair and go right out to the end with it and just cut that straight down right there and that is how you're going to put your black pieces in if you're making the two pendants you're going to want to do that for every single one Now, the next thing we're going to do be before we start really decorating them is we're going to need to put in our eye screws for the top of the pendant to be able to hang on whatever it's going to hang on. So, at the current moment, I have these eye pins and I will use one for each pendant and I need two for the earring. So you would need three if you were making. And actually you can make the earrings so that they, you know, just, just hang down. And that would be absolutely fine. If you want to make them so that they look more like they're hanging down and they don't have holes in them, then you're going to want to put these. And what I do with these, because they're so dainty, is I 
You know, you, it, with a heavily weighted tendon, you know, you think you might need two, but you really don't. You only need one. This is, these are two inch. So I, I do cut a portion of this off. Okay. And I leave it about a half an inch, maybe, long. And it's not exact, and it doesn't have to be exact. A little bit longer for the pendant, a little bit shorter for the earrings. If you're gonna choose the sizes of them. My gosh. We have like someone remodeling our kitchen, it sounds like, but really it's just my daughter doing the dishes. <laughs> She's such a good daughter. Okay, so. With these, what I do is I stick some bacon bond onto, and I know you can probably barely see these because they're really small. Uh, they look like they're about 24 gauge. They're really small. I'm going to try to zoom in for you. And I'll move them up so you can see. But what I do, and I'm zoomed in all the way, guys. So I just put a little, uh, oh, first... I take my pliers, chain nose pliers, and I'll grab it and I just make a bend in it. Whichever way I'm going to put it in the pendant, I make a bend. So I'm going to go, I'm trying to think of how these are going to hang there. Okay, so I'm going to go either left or right and right about in the middle of it so that it looks like an L. Just make it, you know, so that it looks like an L shape. Let's see if I can hold it like that. I don't know if you can see that very well. But just so it looks like an L shape. Can you see that? A little better. Okay. And I'm going to do that with all of them. Bless you. Just bend in the end. Whoops. The end into an L. Make sure you're bending it the right way for whichever way you want your the eye of the pendant to go whichever direction you want it to go, you want it to be parallel to that. So then what I do is I either put a little bit of bacon bond right on the hole or I put it onto the actual little piece itself. You can see it at the top there. I don't know how well. My camera, I'm still learning on how to get it to focus, but uh, at certain distances, but there it is at the very top there. Okay, and I'll do another one just in case I got out of view there. I'm very bad about getting out of view, so I'm going to put a little bit of bacon bond at the top. Grab my piece. I'm going to kind of glide it through the bacon bond so it picks up the bacon bond on it. Okay. And then it's going to go straight in the middle, and then I'm going to have to curve it. And this is, the reason why I'm doing this is so that you cannot pull this out once it's been baked. You just, you can't do it. So that one's in there now. And if you have a little bit too much bacon bomb residue, just take a Q-tip or something and, you know, either spread it around the area or just wipe it off. But that's how it's done, okay? And you're gonna need to do that to the earring uh, portion as well. And you just make sure that that stays nice and smooth there. You don't have a big disruption in your married edge there. Okay. So I have a couple more of these to put in and I'll just high speed it for you.
Okay guys, what I've done here is I have laid out the pieces for both pieces. If you draw a line down the middle here, this is one whole section of pieces. This is one whole section of piece. This would be the pendant. We've got the ring. We've got earrings. And then these are the little pieces that are going to go on top. And the same on this side. And the reason why I'm showing you both of these is so that maybe you get a different idea on colors. We're going to be needing our alcohol. This is 99% alcohol. And we're going to need a paintbrush. And just a regular soft paintbrush that you have. You're going to need either a rag or a paper towel. This is a, a baby wipe that I allowed to dry. And you're going to need your alcohol inks. You're going to need three colors for your set. I have chosen three colors. Actually, this set is for Lee, my partner in crime. And she chose these three colors. And we're going to be kind of trying to shoot for a look mixed for a shirt that she's going to be wearing. And then on the other half, I'm going to need the purple again over here. And I'm going to try to get like a lavender shade if I can. I might mix that with a little bit of white to get the lavender not sure yet and then whoops i'm going with a lavender type shade and then i'm going with this green as my alternative i may use pink it depends on how the lavender comes out so if not then i'm going to use a blue i'm a real big fan of the jacquard pinata inks that's what these are but I also like Ranger. I use Tim Holtz, I believe. This is Tim Holtz. I, I use, you know, all of them, but my favorite are the, the Pinata inks. And I'm pulling out some white there because I'm gonna need to use, need to try to make a lavender. And the other color that I think I'm looking for is like, this is called Pool and it's made by Tim Holtz, okay? So it's going to be kind of a trial and error on this first one here. So we'll do the easy one first. <laughs> what I'm going to do is try to achieve like a lavender type color. I'm going to go ahead and like I said, this is the Tim Holtz purple. I believe it's called Purple Twilight. And I'm just, I'm known for using these lids to like souffle cups because I use the souffle cups for lots of different things. I'm just going to put a couple of drops over here. I'm going to first submerge my brush into alcohol, get it a little wet and, you know, let the excess, wipe the excess off, excess, <laughs> can't talk, off on here. And I'm going to go ahead and get some of this here. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to put this into one of the wells. I think I'm going to go with this one here. And what's nice about this black here is that this black is not going to allow this to run in any of the other wells. Alcohol ink, as you know, dries really fast. So you're going to let that dry for about two minutes. And what you're going to do is for these two, you're going to be having alternate squares in there. So you're going to need to paint one of the squares purple. So we'll do that right now. Actually, this whole row right here, we're going to paint purple. Now while I'm at it, since I'm using purple alcohol ink, I need purple on the other one as well, but I need more of a lavender color. So I'm going to try to make this into more of a lavender color. I'm going to add a little bit of just a little smudge of white to this. I don't want it to be opaque. Wow, that was a big little smudge. That's okay. I can always add some more purple. And this is more of a lavender. The only thing is that it's rather opaque so i'm going to put a little more purple to see and we're going to need some more purple in a minute so i'm going to just drop a couple of drops over there and see if this gives us a nice lavender and this to me is more of a lavender so we're going to paint that over on this side and like i said this is more of a much more of an opaque shade. So I'm just going to do a very light coloring of this onto this side because I want to 
I still want that silver backing to kind of show through. And it doesn't look much different than the purple on the other side, so. I'm actually I'm just going to pull one of those. Okay. The lavender is too opaque for me, so I'm going to just stick with this purple. And I'm going to add the purple on this side here. Because the lavender is just much too opaque for me. So we're going to let this dry. Now this one we don't need to do, but we are going to want to do the other portion. I'm just getting some alcohol here. And what you do to clean your brush is put a little bit of alcohol. You can, you know, pour a little alcohol over it or you just go ahead and clean it with alcohol and a brush and you'll see it starts going clear, okay? And at that point you can um, introduce another color or whatever. So I'm going to add a little bit more purple because what we're going to do is we're going to have to do the same thing onto our earrings as we're doing to our necklace. So I'm just going to do that and our ring as well. So you might as well just kill all these birds with one stone. And you let this layer dry. It only takes a couple of minutes to dry. Alcohol ink dries very, very fast. So then you spread out a little bit more here. I'm going to just put a little bit more on this one. just let it dry and whoops wrong well now this one I'm not going to paint these because I'm doing the larger side And this would be our ring. So we let that dry for about two minutes and then we're going to come back with another coat. So I would go ahead and let these dry. Make sure that they're dry before moving on to the step of adding your pieces like this. Now, like these are dry and I would dare say that they're good enough to add, but I'm not sure. Yeah, they look pretty dry. But I'm going to give them just a couple more minutes to dry the rest of the way. And just in case there's a little pool here or a little pool there that isn't dry and I'll be back looks like pretty much all the areas are dry so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to put a little dab of bacon bond in 
the center of each of these half circles. Just a little bit. That came out quite a bit. Okay. Just into the center. And same thing over here. Okay, next you're going to take the square of the opposite color. I'm going to put the blue one here in the center. And the green one in this center. And pink one up here. You just have to be really careful when you handle these because you don't want your your foil sheet to lift up. You're just doing the opposites, and you may want to put a little bit more pink on that one. I may want to. And then you're going to do the same thing up above. center. Then the next move is one thing you can do with these before you stick them in the oven if you're very careful not to touch the front side is you can dust the back, dust the back side with some mica powder if you wanted to do that. If you wanted to leave it black you could do that as well. It's totally up to you. Personally I like the mica powder. Okay I've got some jacquard mica powders probably going to go ahead and put the silver and so if you wanted to do this step you'd want to get something like a uh, fan brush and gently dip it into your but what you're going to want to do is put it on the pan and get ready to bake it as soon as you handle it and actually the black looks nice you could stick with a carbon black if you wanted to but you're going to want to handle it put the mica powder on and quickly get it onto wherever it is you're going to be baking it on the surface but it gives it a nice reflective backing. You can always go over the edges with a silver leafing pen if you wanted to later. Now right now I'm just going to stick our logo on there. Put a little bit of this and just go ahead and I have these ready to go so I would just press that on there and we're ready to go with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and place it on to the cooking. This one, same thing. So I would just go ahead and dust this on there. And you can be very liberal with it because that way you're going to get it on there quicker. And I would just worry about getting the edges later with a silver leafing pen if you wanted to or a black leafing pen to clean it up however you wanted to go about doing that. Um, but this is just a little bit of extra finishing that you could do. Why am I pinky shaking like that? And if you needed to put your logo on or whatever you need to do. But that's how we're doing that there. As you can see that's done. And I'm just going to go ahead. Now our sides are still the sides of it are still black, as you can see. So um, we may go over it later with a silver leafing pen, or we may go ahead and leave it black. But I'm going to go ahead and stick this now on the surface that we're going to cook it on, bake it on. And the ring really doesn't matter because the ring is going to, this will be all covered up. But in case your ring blank doesn't cover everything, you're going to be all covered by doing that. The earrings will definitely need to be you're going to have to seal the mica powder but you really can't go back later and add it so much better that you add it now 
So I'm going to go ahead and pop those in the oven for 40 minutes. You bake them according to your manufacturer's settings. And I'll see you back here when they're dry out of the oven and cooled. Okay, we're back and everything is out of the oven and cooled. And I also went ahead and put the findings on these. So they're pretty much ready to go. What I'm using today... Generally, I like to use ice resin for my jewelry, but <clears throat> seeing as we have somewhere to be tonight and we're going to need these, I'm going to be using this UV epoxy resin that cures under UV light. Now with this resin, it's a one part resin. You don't have to mix it. You can buy it at epoxyjewelry.com. And all you have to do with this resin is allow it to cure under a UV lamp or outside in the sun. So what I'm doing is I just poured some into a little cup that I can use to dispense this out. I do have a smaller one that has a nozzle, but I had some problems with this resin before curing properly. So I'm going to give it another go. So I'm just pouring this resin on here and I'm going to let it just do its thing and spread out and put it there, pour a little bit there. And like I said, I'm just going to sort of let it do its thing and, and spread out on its own and then I'll guide the rest. That one went a little fast for me. We don't need much on these small pieces. Um, what we really need more is on the larger pieces. So, whoops. And this, of course, is going to allow for any overflow. So what all I'm going to do here is spread this gently to the edges. You want to just make sure that your edges have gotten the resin to them. That's the most important part. This is a self-doming resin, so it will dome. And what I like about this one is it does not pull away from the sides, which a lot of resin, especially the self-doming resins, will pull away from the sides and give you problems at a later date. I'm just trying to get a little bit more on here so we covered the whole piece here and basically want to do i don't think i put any on this piece. so all i'm going to do with these is just kind of guide the resin where it needs to be and i'm going to pop this under my uv light i think we might need just a tad bit more even though i've got some on the overspill tray it doesn't uh, take much of this resin you want it to be nice and domed so i'm going to pull it to the edges here make sure everything's covered and it looks like it's done a good job on its own there's a couple of places here that i've got to add some but pretty much it's done a good a good job on its own with filling in gaps this particular sheet that i have underneath it um, resin does not adhere to it so i will be wiping off the resin prior to putting it into the under the heat lamp. I've already got the heat lamp going so it's nice and warm. Usually on warmer days if you're doing it in the sun it, they, the resin cures a little bit faster so I am I've already turned the source of the heat lamp on so that it's because it warms up a little bit not a whole lot but the heat the lights do get warm so that it has a little bit of warmth behind it. And all I'm trying to do right now is get it to where it gets to the edges. This one is definitely to the edge because it went over the edge, <laughs> which is not what I wanted, but just wanted to get it to the edge, okay? A little bit more on this one just to make sure that we've gotten it all the way to the edge. And then once you've gotten all the pieces covered, then I'm going to be putting them, this tile that we're on right now is not exactly straight, but I will be putting them on a tile that is completely straight and we're not going to have any problems with it not being level. I'm going to do it one by one and we'll give this a go. One, looks like it's ready. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these all in and I will be back once they are all cured. 
and it only takes about 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, everybody, I'm back, and the resin has set, and it did a beautiful job, actually, this time. I don't know how well you can see this, but in the light, but it just really did a nice job coating it, and I wiped it down with some alcohol after taking it out of the UV lamp, out from underneath the UV lamp, and it did a beautiful job. Now on, you know, I had already put the, the earring findings on the back of the earrings and uh, went ahead and put the, the resin and um, put, put it under the UV light. And then once they were out, I have this other product that I use on the back and it is a, it is also a UV product. And what that does is it puts a very nice shine onto whatever it is that you're putting under the light. This is called, uh, it's not nail polish because nail polish and polymer clay is not compatible. But this is a top coat UV curing gel. And I put this, I have used it for quite some time now and I have not noticed any bad effects from it or anything like that. It seems to be working really well. And I've seen some other polymer clay artists use this type of resin, if you will. It's, it's just a, a gel top coat, but it's not, like I said, it's not nail polish. It doesn't even smell like nail polish, but so. It's just a UV and LED, you know, the gel. So I put that on the back of the piece and I cured the back. It only takes a few minutes for that. This top side took about 20 minutes or so, 15, 20 minutes, I would say, to cure that. And then all I did was slip on a memory wire. It's like a black uh, memory wire. It's just a black memory wire necklace that's already, I've already put together. So I slipped that on there. And then the earrings are done with the findings. Now the ring, I have a ring base such as this one right here. I happen to like the ring bases that don't adjust from the bottom. They adjust from underneath on the top. So when you're adjusting and pulling out the ring to make it larger, it's doing it on the top of your finger as opposed to the bottom where you're going to have, you know, if your finger's not large, if your finger's too large and you need to make it, it, it bigger, then you don't have an issue of it uh, pinching on the bottom or anything like that because it adjusts on the top and it's got a pretty wide base so you can fit a good size ring on there whatever it is you're putting on there so this was about the size and I went ahead and just glued it on and here it is right here and what I ended up doing was I ended up Putting, I kind of reversed it and I did add a couple of rhinestones and I just used some Gorilla Glue to glue them on and I had moved like the green color down here. I put a green stone up here as you can see and then the blue, I put a blue stone down here. So it just kind of, you know, brought the ring to life a little bit more. So uh, that is what I did for that. So. Basically, that's it. The backs of these all cured very well, just as well as the the front did. And so, if you liked this video, please take a moment and, and give us a thumbs up if this has helped you in any way. And also, take a moment to subscribe to our channel because we have a lot of videos coming up. In fact, we have several right now that we're producing that we're going to be uploading. And so... We have a lot of great things coming up, so please take a moment to subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Okay? Have a good night. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.